Please, everybody, welcome out Brian Kernahan. So, quickly, briefly, for the audience, can you outline kind of the the role Bell Labs played in the early history of computers? <laughs> and bells. Bells <laughs> and labs too, for that matter. I guess mostly it was things like operating systems and programming languages, rather than computers themselves. Computers came along before that, but Bell Labs did invent the transistor that makes computers work today. So yeah, little stuff. Like that. Do you have any like? Crazy war stories from those <laughs> developmental times. Are you a serviceman? <laughs> <laughs> no, would you believe that I actually avoided the draft originally by being here as a student and then and then when I graduated from this place, graduate student, I had to register for the draft and I was classified 5F, which means too old to fight. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't miss much. <laughs> stories. Uh, I meant more stories. <laughs> <laughs> we sort of got derailed on that, didn't we? Yeah, what's a good war story? <laughs> what's a good story, period? Gee, I don't know. <laughs> when you, so you, you wrote uh, a very cool book that uh, defined, or er, yeah, define the language of C, which is still 30 years later read today. I mean, did you know how important it would be, how long it would be read? Do you know, like, what, what do you think you were getting into with that little thing? I had not a clue. I think when I remember talking to the editor who published it the first time, he said, how many copies do you think we'll sell? And I said, I haven't a clue, but maybe a few thousand or something like that. And we were off by several orders of magnitude. <laughs> still selling. Put my kid through college. It was a good deal. <laughs> Didn't put any of you guys through college, but okay. <laughs> but keep buying. <laughs> so, do you? Remember, what was the first thing you ever did on a computer? As you can remember, your first. Oh, gee, you know, it's probably one of these silly programs where you write and it just says hello, 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 or something like that over and over and over again. Really boring. <laughs> oh, I love that one. <laughs> And when was the first time that you realized, like, wow, this like this machine could connect a lot of people to BuzzFeed articles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really bad at predicting the future, sadly. <laughs> what, 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 like, what, <laughs> what, what kinds of projects were y'all working on? I mean, you obviously didn't have any idea of where it was going, but what were the like small-scale goals? What were you trying to get computers better enough to do? The goal of a lot of that stuff at Bell Labs was just to make it easier to write programs, to, for programmers to do new things. So a programmer wanted to do something in the work that was done there at Bell Labs by my colleagues, mostly them, not me, was to just make it a lot easier to write code. It made it a lot more fun than it had been. And then the stuff that I worked on specifically would tended to be things related to document preparation, the sort of stuff that today would be done by Microsoft Word, but in the good old days was done much more kind of a batch way. And much harder to do. But I think what I did here, I think I had the first machine readable thesis at Princeton, which is kind of hard to imagine. But back when I was your age, or a little older, <laughs> when dinosaurs still walked the earth in New Jersey, it's true. Um, <laughs> it's a strange state. <laughs> I wrote a perk. I was too cheap to pay somebody two or three bucks a page to type my thesis on an ordinary manual typewriter, which probably most of you have never seen. And so I wrote a program that would make it possible for me to print my, or type my thesis on punch cards, yet another thing that we have never seen, and then printed it over and over again, as many copies as I needed. This sort of thing you take for granted today. But at that time, it was neat. And I say, say this was 69. This was probably the first machine-readable thesis in the place. It was not the best quality, but that's a <laughs> same. But so these punch cards, they're not multi-use, right? So each punch yeah. card was just a permanent copy of part of your thesis. And they're not used for like mine workers to like check in. <laughs> yeah. but it's like, that's how I know punch cards. <laughs> 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 
just, you know, being a grad student is like working in the mines anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the Hello, Hello, Hello program. You are credited with writing the first cited Hello World program, which are now kind of ubiquitous in, in learning to code. Was that, was that your original idea? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, as far as I can tell, it was. It must be true. And yeah, it was a long time ago, obviously, and I had this mental picture of a chick coming out of an egg or something like that in, in a cartoon, and underneath the chick was saying hello world or something, and I thought, okay, there's the, the model of what you want to do with your first program. You want it to get, say something, doesn't matter what it is, and then after that it's all easy. Now those of you who are taking 126 or something like that will realize it's not quite that simple. <laughs> Is there anything else, if you knew that it was going to be repeated, you know, to like so many students over the years, is there any other couple of words you maybe would have stuck in? <laughs> Pay attention. Send me money. Send me money. But so now you've been teaching and you're teaching two very different classes, one of which is uh, Computers in Our World is about kind of giving some basic knowledge to a lot of people. Jake took it, who might not otherwise know much about computers. I have been changed. <laughs> and the other... Um, Think what he was before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the other... Did we then? <laughs> advanced probing, programming techniques, which, as I understand it, is just kind of you give them the semester to do a project, and it's produced stuff like ICE and like some other very cool, yeah. sophisticated programs. Yeah, I mean, they're different courses. 333 is a great course for people who want to do something, and it, it takes advantage of what Princeton folks are good at. You tell them to do something, they go do it. Right? <laughs> you don't say what it is. Anything you want, do something. That's Clean my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need an app for that. <laughs> and so ICE is probably the best, most known example of it, but there's lots of others. I was looking at the Tiger App stuff earlier today, and there's a lot of Tiger Apps that came out of the class, too. It has nothing to do with me. I stand up there in the front, and I say, you guys got to do a project. I don't care what it is. You got to work together in groups, so you learn what it's like to get along with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then I sit back and see what they do. And they do amazing things. Do you consult them? Like, do, you, do they come to you with questions and things like that? Oh, yeah. Or is it like just strictly closed door? Easy <laughs> class. <laughs> well, you know, in theory, they tell me what they're going to do ahead of time, and I say, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but it's almost, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. And then I'll do it. And then at the end of the semester, they have to stand up in public and give a demo and public talk for half an hour of what they did. And those are open. Anybody wants to come in May? Come and see what your friends have done. It's amazing stuff. It really is. And then the one in the fall is, is 109, which I'm doing right now. We can see some of my friends from 109 all around today. At least I'd be able to see them work with darn lights. <laughs> and yeah, I think you know almost everyone on campus because of that class. And it's great. <laughs> is there anything that you, you've learned since teaching computer science that you wouldn't expect that you couldn't have learned while working in a lab professionally? I think the thing that I've learned is how much fun it is to do this kind of stuff. You know, I, you had Shirley Tillman on here about last month or something like that, and she once told me, I can't believe it, they pay me to do this job. And I, I thought, I wouldn't take Shirley's job on a bet. <laughs> but they pay me to do my job, and that's kind of a surprise, and a pleasant surprise, because it's just such a blast. You can't imagine how much fun it is. <laughs> Very lucky to have you.